Hi everyone, so welcome back to Daily Web Coding. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the technology that I use to build a web app. So, so first, we need to understand how most of the web app works. So most of the web app works just like this. So we have a client, which is the front end, and it will talk to the server, which is a back end, via an API. So the client make an API request to the server. So server will respond back to the client. Most of the time, it's in form of JSON data, and that's how most of the web app works. So let's go into the client side, how do I, which technology that I use. So for the front end or the clients, so I'm using Next.js. So I've been using React for almost four years. So, and if I want to build a production with React, I'm going to use Next.js because Next.js is the React.js framework. It added a lot of feature uh, on top of React. So such as, let's say, route handling, so and image optimization, built-in optimization. And on top of that, we can choose to render the component inside the client or on the server, and which is really nice. So this is my go-to for, um, like, let's say, React framework. And then for style, I'm using Tailwind. So Tailwind is really nice and it's helped me solve one of my biggest problem with css is try to come up with the right name for the class with tailwind everything is just nice so we can we just write a css inside class name and so one of the things is like we confidently uh, can remove which part of the code uh, of the tailwind and then we confidently make uh, that our app is not break and we know that which part is going to change so that is one of the benefits and the confidence that i get from while using tailwind and so for if we using tailwind and if we want to have like a ui like components ready for us um right now i'm using the chat cns library right here so this one is nice um uh, the beauty of this one when we install this one so we just install the component that we need and uh, it will write the source code inside our projects and then we can just uh, go and change whatever we want and to this one so which is really nice and then our app will write in typescript so typescript is going to help us to avoid silly errors such as when we're trying to access the objects key that does not exist inside the object and and yeah it will avoid silly error in development mode okay and for states management, I'm going to use Zustend. So with Zustend, it's really nice and it's less boilerplate compared to the other uh, states management such as Redux, which is really big. And with Redux, we have to wrap uh, the provider around our apps. But with Zustend, we don't have to do that. We can just write the one file, it's called like store, and then you can just use it directly and you don't have to wrap your apps around Zustend and things like that, no. That's why I love this one. It's less boilerplate and very easy to set up. All right, so I think that's pretty much it for the front end side. So let's go ahead and talk about back end. So for the back end, I do not going to write my own uh, back end API and things like that, such as authentications and things like that. Because if I do that, I'm going to spend a lot of time doing that. And on top of that, let's say such as a feature such as authentication, I need to make sure my app is secure enough to handle authentication and things like that. So it's going to take me a long time to write my own uh, service or API if I do that. So that's why I choose to, uh, existing service that handle uh, all of the feature that I want. So either I can choose Superbase or Firebase. So I choose Superbase right here compared to Firebase because I want to use Postgres. And with Superbase, we can, well, database. So we are using uh, Postgres. And on top of that, you can do real-time database as well, so which is really nice. And for authentication, we can do a lot of authentication method. There's a lot of OAuth method that you can use. There's a lot. And storage, we can use it to store audio and file like that, everything. It just handle for me so i don't really have to care on how to build this thing i'm just use it so most of the time i just focus on building a front end and then for everything other feature i'm just using superbase uh sdk and then talk to it and then that's get how it's done so so then it, it's really fast so by this way and the for right now let's talk about the deployment so with this kind of application, so deployment for Superbase, we don't have to deploy on our own. We can just, uh, Superbase has their server, so we can just use that, so we don't have to deploy. 
And so in, in this case, we just deploy our front um, apps. So then I'm choosing Vercel because Vercel is the one who built Next.js, right? And so when we deploy with Vercel, so then all of the feature from Next.js is going to work well in, on Vercel. So that's why I'm choosing Vercel. And on top of that, uh, it's we it connects to GitHub as well. So if we store our code in GitHub, and so when we push our code to GitHub, so then it's automatically trigger and redeployment inside our Vercel as well, which is really nice. And all right, so for the domain name, I'm using Namechip, so that's what I've been using so far. I mean, there's a lot more option like GoDaddy, but I haven't used it yet, so I'm using Namechip. All right, so this is all the technology that I use to build a web app. Uh, and let's talk about pricing. So I think, let's say, um, so for the initial project, so I think most of the thing is free. Let's say for the Superbase, uh, we they have like a free tier option that you can use. And it has a free two uh, free pro two project that you can uh, use. So and as you can see, this is uh, the option that you can have with the free tier. And if you were to upgrade, it's only twenty five dollars a month. And then for sell, and then you can uh, that's free as well. And then you can just upgrade um, to pro only twenty dollar twenty dollars a month. So with this. So if we upgrade both Superbase and Vercel, so I think the price is going to be like 45 to $50 a month. So which is not a lot, but I think most of the time, like for when you start uh, an idea, so the project mark your idea, I think on initial, you can just use it for free um, until you reach some certain point when there's a lot of user and that you can upgrade later. So this is uh, really nice because at first you don't have to spend anything. Uh, depend on like say the number of user that you have on your web app and then later on you can just upgrade it to match the number of user that you have all right so yeah i think that pretty much it this is all the technology that i use to build a web app so let me know in the comment what do you think and don't forget to comment the technology that you use to build your web app as well all right so see you in the next video peace